is that change I smell in Flowery Branch? It might be because the Falcons are going after Justin Simmons. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. We're going to help you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So, guys, if you don't know me, I'm your very humble host, your very humble hater, Aaron Freeman. Been hating on the Atlanta Falcons for almost two decades. Well, really, three decades, but, you know, used to hate on them over at Falcons.com IRP. But still going strong on this illustrious podcast. You may also know me as Mr. Drew, a.k.a. Sirius Black. That's going to come in handy later today. The Jolly Green Giant, the Iron That Choppers, the Iron, a.k.a. Mr. A.k.a. And I think each and every one of you guys. That is an everydayer of this podcast that hates on this team with me each and every day as your first listen, your first watch of the day. All you got to do to hate, but we're not going to hate on the Falcons anymore. We're going to love the Falcons. All you got to do to love the Falcons is subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. So, right, we're hating, loving. It's it's a mixed bag of emotions today, right? I was listening to a podcast last night. Some idiot podcaster had the audacity to say that the Falcons weren't going to go after Justin Simmons, right? And then I had to laugh at this idiot podcaster, me, by the way, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down, right? Where the Falcons, we find out the news today that the Falcons are bringing in Justin Simmons for a visit. And it's the Falcons are finally doing something, right? After five months of not really doing anything when it came to the defense and just largely ignoring it. Yeah, yeah. We know they drafted, they invested some draft resources in it. But uh, as we've stated so many times, like, yeah, that's a that's that's gonna solve problems in 2026, not in 2024. Right. And so for me, if the Falcons manage to land Justin Simmons and no deal is done yet, right? He visited the Saints last week. They didn't get a deal done. Doesn't guarantee the Falcons are gonna get a deal done. But if they do land Justin Simmons, it is a massive change for how this organization has operated, not just under Terry Fontenot, but previously under general managers. Gone is the complacency, which has been the root of all my hatred towards this football team over the last five years because it's plagued this organization, not only this offseason, but you know for over a decade. But we'll get into that later in today's episode. So. What are the Falcons getting in Justin Simmons? Well, they're getting one of the best safeties in the NFL. It's put it in a nutshell, they're getting another Jesse Bates, right? Last year, when we were hyping up the Falcons going after Jesse Bates, I talked about how he's like one of the five or six best center fielding safeties in the NFL. Well, the best center fielding safety in the NFL, at, that, at least at that time, was Justin Simmons, right? So he was number one on the list, and Jesse Bates was like number five or six. So you're actually getting a better version of Jesse Bates in a lot of ways. Now, he's not coming off his best season. Right. And part of that I know was due to him injuring his hip early in the season. But I know the lockdown Broncos guys certainly still think he's still got plenty left in the take to be one of the best safeties in the biz and was hugely impactful for that Broncos defense. Is it a coincidence that Jesse, Justin Simmons wasn't in that Dolphins game that they gave him 70 points? Is that a coincidence? I don't think it is. But basically, what you're getting in Justin Simmons is everything you love about Jesse Bates. You're you're getting basically the same: the football ability, the ball hawking skills, the speed, the range, the instincts. Not only on the football field, but also off the field with the leader in the locker room, high character player off the field. And so, I'm sure some of you, and I've had some people ask me, like, "Well, if Justin Simmons is so good. Why did the Broncos cut him?" Well, simply put, that was one of the consequences of the, of them taking on the huge dead money hit to get out of the Russell Wilson contract this year. Now. The salary cap is a lie. We'll talk more about why it's a lie later in it, but it's not a myth, right? There are consequences and repercussions when it comes to big money players like Russell Wilson not performing up to their contracts. And that is something that the Falcons need to keep in mind in the future because they got a lot more big money players and those guys need to perform, but more on that later. And so then it begs the question from a lot of people, well, well, if Justin Simmons is so good, then why is he still unsigned? Well, I can only guess at that. But I imagine part of it is him being on the wrong side of 30. Often where we see guys get to this certain age, they tend to be very selective on who they sign with and when they sign with. They, they're they not 
I'm not going to grind it out in OTAs every day in April and May and June and whatnot. If I can skip half of training camp and, and not sweat it out in the Georgia heat or the Louisiana heat or the South Florida heat or whatever, why not? I'm Justin Simmons. I don't need to go to training camp every day. I got this, <laughs> right? So I think that's part of it. I think the other part of it is Justin Simmons is very selective on where he lands because from what I hear, he wants to win, right? He's been in the NFL for eight years, never played in the playoff game. Denver has never made the playoffs in the eight years that he played there. So now that he knows that, you know, the clock is ticking on how long his NFL career is because typically safeties aren't playing until they're like 35, 36. Some do, but it's rare. You know, you got a couple more years left. You want to maximize your winning opportunities, right? And so I think that's a big reason why Justin Simmons is slow playing his market. And the other one is probably the market isn't as robust as he would like it to be. He's not going to probably sign for anywhere cheap, right? Which is what I'm assuming why he didn't get come to a, a deal with the Saints last week. Because he wanted a certain dollar amount. They were like, eh. Well. And he was like, all right. We'll see. I'll shop, I'll shop myself around. We'll see what's what's going on. All right. We saw a slow safety market all offseason long where several of the guys near the top of the market, you know, had to kind of settle for one or two year deals for like three, four, five million dollars, right? Cameron Curl, Julian Blackman, Quandre Diggs, just signed with the Titans, Jordan Fuller, Jordan Whitehead. Now, some guys got paid, right? Xavier McKinney, Kyle Duggar. But if you're Justin Simmons, like, you know, you've been the best safety in the NFL basically for five years. Why wouldn't you want to, to get what you think your, your money's worth? And again, I can only speculate on what that figure is, but my guess is based off of the market, you know, it's probably like $8 million, $10 million, maybe more, right? Especially if you're not going to be able to get a long-term deal, right? For that, you know, 16, 17, $18 million that I'm sure Justin Simmons like, I'm still worth that or whatever, but we'll see on that. So I think the money is going to be the biggest challenge for the Falcons to reel in such a big fish like Justin Simmons, right? As someone, idiot podcaster, mentioned yesterday on his pod that, you know, Falcons only have $3 million in cap space. And the question is, can they reel in someone like Justin Simmons with that amount of money? And that's where we're going to get into our next conversation here on Locked on Falcons, which is how big a lie is the salary cap? And can the Falcons gaslight it into, uh, you know, landing Justin Simmons? And we'll do that as we continue today's Locked on Falcons. Passion, drive, patience. It is the formula for winning championships, and it's also what's going to keep your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, so much more, including seatbelt covers that I ordered earlier this summer to go on my classic 2005 Hyundai Elantra. And you know, if I got a 2005 Hyundai Elantra, guys, you know I'm into speed, power, and style. And if you're into those things, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for and with eBay Guaranteed Fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time and your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. So the salary cap is a lie. Now, when I say it's a lie, it doesn't mean it's a myth, right? People interpret that as like, oh, the salary cap doesn't exist. Oh, it definitely exists. It's a lie because it can be manipulated, gaslit, right? But I'm not gaslighting you guys when I tell you after you make Lockdown Falcons your first listen, why not make Lockdown Fantasy Football your second listen? Find out who to target, who to avoid, some sleepers, free and available on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. But yeah, the salary cap is a lie. And because of that, if the Falcons wanted to, if they wanted to, they could go out there and turn their $3 million in current cap space and potentially turn that into $25 million in cap space fairly easily by moving money around with some restructured contracts. All right, kick that can down the road. And you as Falcon fans, Knowing, you know, the past, the previous general manager before Terry Fontenot got here, they did that constantly from 2016 to 2020 over those last four or five years, right? You, you as Falcon fans play in the same division as the New Orleans Saints. Nobody's better at kicking the can down the road than the New Orleans Saints. 
Every offseason, they entered the offseason $80 million in the salary over the salary cap, right? And I, every year, the Falcon fans are like, this is the year. The Saints are done. They're, they're cooked. They can't even field the competitive roster. And they managed to get under the cap. They managed to sign free agents to make a bigger splash in free agency than the Atlanta Falcons did with like $100 million in less cap space, right? They brought in Chase Young, of all people. My, my arch nemesis, Chase Young. And, you know, everybody's like, oh, they're going to suck this year. And it's like, nope, they're, they're, they bounce right back, managed to win eight, nine games, whatever it is. And they're going to do it again this year. They always do. That's why the salary cap is a lot. So when I say the Falcons do have the potential, yes, they do. They do have the potential to land Justin Simmons, regardless of what type of money he's asking for. But the real question is, do they have the willingness? Right? The potential's there, but the willingness. Is that there? That's a maybe because under Terry Fontenot, unlike Thomas Dimitro, they have been less willing to kick that can down the road and much to my chagrin, because, you know, we would have Joe Tooney and Carl Lawson and all these other big time free agents from 21 and 22. If they had done that and just basically kicked the can down the road, then no, not saying that they would be in a better place, but at least it would have made, you know, that, that March free agent content here on lockdown Falcons a lot better back then. But like they haven't really moved money around. You know, they've restructured a couple of contracts like Taylor Heineke, John o. Smith. I think they might have moved some money around for Lee Smith when they traded for him back in 2021. They did touch Jake's deal at one point, I think. Jake Matthews, that is, restructured his contract. I think that was last year. I don't think they've touched Grady's deal. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But they gave him that extension in 22, and they haven't really touched it in two years since. Right? They don't really like to restructure big money contracts, right? And they don't like to structure these deals in a way that when they give out these big money contracts, that they're trying to maximize sort of that immediate cap space by backloading these deals like so many other NFL teams do. Right. We talked about that with Kirk Cousins this offseason, right? So many people back in February were insisting to me in my comment section that uh, you know, we can't afford Kirk, right? He's gonna kill our cap, you know, in part due to the common misconception that, you know, if you pay a guy $40 million a year and in Kirk's case, $45 million a year, that means he's going to carry $45 million cap it. That's not how the cap works, right? Part of the reason why it's a lot. But like, as I explained back then, you know, the Falcons could have structured it in a way where, you know, Kirk's cap hit could have been somewhere like around $15 million. Now, in reality, the Falcons decided Kirk's cap hit is going to be $25 million. So they basically threw away potentially $10 million that they could have spent on anybody, right? Now, in hindsight, their decision to do that makes a lot more sense to take more on in year one with Kirk's contract because of the Penix pick. So that they would have, you know, still have that off ramp for Kirk in year three, which is going to make next offseason very interesting because of their limited cap space that they have. Again, they can move money around. Can they, are they going to be willing to kick that can down the road? And especially, are they going to be willing to restructure Kirk Cousins' contract, who has by far the biggest cap hit on the team with $40 million next year? Because if you do, that potentially ruins your chance to take that off ramp, right? You might have to push it down a year, similar to what the Saints do. And that's important why this team is going to win this year, because you'll be content to leave that $40 million albatross around your neck if you're coming off a winning season. But if you're not, and you disappoint this year, and you're sitting there going like, yeah, man, we need to plug these holes, and we can't do it all with draft picks. Right? We need to spend some money in free agency. You got to move money around. So they're going to make some hard financial decisions. But again, that's a sick conversation for six months from now. Right. We'll see how that plays out again. It's a non-issue if you win. Right. No one, no one complains when you win games. That's that's always the case. Now, another question is going to be, you know, could they extend AJ Terrell, as we've discussed many times this offseason? And that would be another way to free up cash space. Yes, that's a possibility. But again, it depends on how they structure that contract. Right. AJ has a current cap hit of twelve point three million dollars due to uh, his fifth year option, you know, base salary. You know, I've seen some people, including my guy, Daniel Flick over at Fan Nation, you know, tweet out that like, oh, they could save up to nine million dollars by extending AJ Terrell. And that's not 100 percent true based off of what I understand. It really depends on the structure, how much money they would save. Uh, extending AJ, the structure of his new contract, right? I think that nine million dollar figure comes from the idea if they lowered AJ Terrell's twelve point three million dollar salary to the vet minimum and then converted the difference into signing bonus, which they then spread out 
over the maximum number of five void years, right? That's not really an extension. That's just a fancy restructure. So could they do a real contract extension with AJ Terrell that could save eight or $9 million? Sure. Again, but in that situation, you would have to be willing to give AJ Terrell like two bonuses, which based off of how they've structured previous big money deals like Kirk and Jesse Bates and Grady Jarrett and Jake Matthews and David Onyemata under Terry Fontenot, they haven't really structured those deals in that way. Right. So I don't think they're going to be saving a ton of money if they do find a way to extend AJ Terrell in like the next 48 hours. Right. Maybe three, four million dollars, maybe, maybe a little bit more than that. You know, but sitting here today, again, was assuming that AJ is getting that extension that is on the horizon at some point in the next six months, you know, or really the next year, because technically they could probably tag him next year, you know, which again makes the, the money situation even more hectic going into the offseason. But we'll see how 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 they handle that. But I would be surprised if AJ knew new cap hit in year one was less than eight million dollars. Right. Because if it was lower than that, you're probably looking at a second year cap hit of like 30 plus million dollars or something like that. And then that would force you to kind of have to restructure it, which is, again, something that they've been reluctant to do. So instead, you just probably built in the structure initially where it's like that initial cap hit is like 10 million dollars. And, and then the second year cap hit is something like, I don't know, 20 million dollars. I don't know what it is. So that you can avoid kicking that can down the road, which they seem to want to avoid at all costs. Now, maybe, you know, they're changing things. But all that to say is, can they afford Justin Simmons? Yes. If they're willing to move money around. Then it begs the question of, are they willing to move money around? And the answer is maybe. But so far, over the last four years, the answer is not really. They're not willing to move money around. But things are changing, right? And we'll talk about why this pursuit of Justin Simmons shows that things are changing. And we'll also give you the latest updates on DeMarco Hellams and his status as we uh, wrap up today's Locked on Fox. Now in the NFL training camp and the preseason is all about finding the right quality professionals to fit your team. And you're constantly looking for that for your small business, but you don't have to sweat it out in the Georgia heat to find it. Because all you got to do is head on over to LinkedIn Jobs. They have the tools that can help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just any old job board. They help you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but just might be open for the perfect role in any given month. Over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So we did get that DeMarco Hellums update today, as that idiot podcaster suggested on his most recent episode. And um, Raheem Moore said it was a significant ankle injury. He's going to miss significant time due to an ankle injury. And again, I think. That idiot podcaster and myself uh, indicated if you missed yesterday's episode uh, when I was saying crazy things, the one thing I got right was, or seemingly right, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. But it's the idea that they're going to wait till after final cuts to put Helms on injured reserve so that then they can bring him back during the season. Now, Raheem didn't specify what significant time is. Again, if it's a, if it's an ankle or something like that, again, I'm, I'm assuming it's like two months minimum. We'll, we'll see. So, you know. Maybe sometime middle of the season, we might see DeMarco Hellens again. We'll probably get more information at some point, but until then, we can only speculate. So uh, DeMarco Hellens is going to miss a significant chunk of the season. We'll, or let's just say this. Based off of the expectation that he will be on the short-term IR, he's going to miss at least four games. That will, that's that's all we can really say at this point. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, the Falcons did make some other roster moves today. They signed two DBs, Joss Thompson, the safety, and William Hooper, the corner, uh, I think both of these guys are depth pieces, can maybe potentially come in, earn a practice squad spot if they, they ball out over the next you know, two games or whatever. To make room for them, they cut wide receiver Austin Mack, who they picked up earlier this offseason from the CFL. And then, of course, they cut the one player that 
theoretically could have been a fullback for them. That was Robert Burns, who started camp on the pup list injured. And so clearly, no longer do the Falcons have even someone who resembles a fullback on the roster. And so it's truly an end of an era. So it's a sad time for me personally in the brand. So, you know, it's caused me to think a lot about, you know, my beginnings, right? You know, I was born by the river in a little tent. And just like the river, I've been running ever since. It's been a long time coming, but I know a change is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. And so it begs the question, are the Falcons changing how they do business? Is the complacency that you've heard me complain about constantly on this podcast for months, if not years, gone? And it's hard for me at this point in time to get my hopes up because this has been the way that the Falcons have operated business for so long. This is my number one beef with this organization. This, this constant annual insistence that there's just one piece away. We just got to get that one piece. Maybe, sometimes it's two pieces. But it's like one piece. We just we're just one piece away, year after year after year after year after year after year. Six years, they they get proven wrong time and time again because they can't make the playoffs, right? And that's my biggest beef with this team. They're a reactive team, not a proactive team, right? They they you know this whole off season was been hey we're just a quarterback away. We'll put all our resources into one quarterback. You know what? Actually, we got a few more resources. Let's invest that in the second quarterback. And again, I'm not mad at the Falcons upgrading the quarterback. It's an important piece, but that's not all you're going to do, right? Again, oh, you know, they also beefed up their D-line depth, right? But I was having a, a conversation with the folks in the Discord over the weekend, right? And I basically told them, and I'm, I'm sure this is going to be a surprise. There was a surprise to some of them, and I'm sure it's going to be a surprise to some of y'all. And this will be something we'll explore deeper the closer we get to the season. But, you know, maybe things are changing. But I told them that, like, to me, this season, this team is either going to go eight and nine or they're going to go nine and eight. And a lot of people were shocked by that because it's like, no, this team is definitely going to get 10, 11, even maybe 12 wins. Right. In large part due to the upgrade that they've made at the quarterback position, because clearly Kirk Cousins is going to add three or four, if not five wins to this football team. Right. Sure. If you played last year. That was the case last year. Kirk Cousins on the 2023 Falcons, yeah, they probably would have won 10, 11, 12 games. But that was the 2023 Falcons. It's the 2024 Falcons. Right? This is the problem. It's they, they're always reacting to last year. They were doing this under Thomas Dimitrov. And it was the worst thing about Dimitrov, right? Where the 2010 season where they got blown out by the Packers, like, okay, let's, let's trade it all for that explosive playmaker because we got behind in that Packers game and we'll get the explosive playmakers that can allow us to get back into those games. So they traded it all for Julio Jones. We were one piece away, right? And they were nearly right in that assessment, right? They got real close to winning a Super Bowl in 2012. They were 10 yards away from the Super Bowl. So the next offseason, like, oh, we're 10 yards away from the Super Bowl. So we just need to make a slight adjustment. We just need to swap out a washed Michael Turner to a slightly less washed Steven Jackson. We need to swap out a quote-unquote washed, and I, I use quote-unquote because I, he wasn't washed at that point. He was just hurt, right? John Abraham for a healthy and slightly less washed OCU Minora and so on and so forth. I can go down the list. It, it happens every year, right? And it's just like this, this style of approach to just basically, we just have to do the bare minimum is what I hate, right? This quarterback away mentality, this all, put all our resources at the quarterback and we'll throw a couple of bodies in the D line and we'll just cut corners everywhere else. Because we put all of our pieces into that one piece. And it's the idea that it's going to be fine. It's always this idea of, let's just do the bare minimum. Let's just walk the tightrope, right? right? Rather than let's build out the road where we can walk comfortably, right? We're going to walk down the road that's this long rather than this long, you know? And so that's my beef with this organization. And you look at the safety position, right? You look at Richie Grant. You look at DeMarco Helms. Are, are these... Either one of these guys, long-term options. Again, I, I know there's people that are, you know, DeMarco Hellams advocates, but we're, we're a ways away from DeMarco Hellams being like, oh, what DeMarco Hellams did in, in the last two months of the season, that's the guy that we want starting next to Jesse Bates for the next five years. It's like, he can get an audition for the job. You know, we, we've seen what Richie Grant, and I'm not as down on Richie Grant as the rest of the world is, but like both of these guys, your probably best case scenario is they're just functional starters this year. And then next off season, you're just, you're just basically punting that position. They're bridge starters for a year. 
it's doing the bare minimum to get by. Let's just get functional play from our second and third safeties. Right. And we talked about this a couple of weeks back on this podcast on the ways that you measure defensive success and talking about the ways that this air, the ways that this defense can improve. One of those was going from like 28th in, in, in turnover creation and improving that, especially given that certain areas of your uh, roster, you're probably going to take a step back, like, you know, affecting the quarterback and whatnot. And so now I'm looking at you going after Justin Simmons. And it's like, oh, okay, like now you're actually trying to improve your defense in ways by going out there and getting someone that can create those turnovers for you, right? Him and Justin Simmons and Jesse Bates are going to be all night on the town cheating, right? You got two cheaters back there. Let's make some plays, right? And it was the question of could Jesse Bates do that in a cover three scheme that we're going to expect in the Raheem Morris and Jimmy Lake? It's like maybe, but you basically need Grant or Helms to be Ricardo Allen in that regard. And nothing either has done to shows you that, you know, they're capable of of being that steady Eddie Ricardo Allen on the back end that can allow Jesse Bates, you know, to step out on time and and cheat and do his thing. It's part of the reason why, like, I I sit here and I trash the defense so much because I'm just like, what type of top 10 defense is stock full of guys that you're just hoping are fine and functional, that are bridge starters, that you're going to have to replace a year from now? Again, that's fine for the Falcons in 2021 and 2022 when you're kind of in this early rebuild mode and whatnot, and you're kind of feeling it out and trying to figure things out. It's not fine in 2024, guys, right? when you need to win games. So again, we're adding a second non-monogamous safety with Justin Simmons, potentially, to tag team with Jesse Bates, right? You know, Their wives and girlfriends are not going to be able to find them at 3 a.m. They're not going to know where they are. They're going to find, you know, just random pieces of, uh, you know, women's undergarden in, in, in strange places that they don't recognize. Like, did I buy this? Because we got two cheaters and I love it. Right. We do not believe this is the official statement. You can quote me on this. We do not believe in monogamy on the Locked on Falcons podcast. That's that's our new mantra if we land Justin Simmons. So finally. Finally, this team has gotten off their butt after five months of just basically twiddling their thumbs. So hopefully they land this big fish because now you got to reel them in because, you know, trying to sign Justin Simmons doesn't mean nothing to me. Right? You tried to get Daniel Hunter. You tried to get Montez White. You tried to get Deshaun Watson. You tried to trade back into the first round, right? Trying doesn't give me any solace if you only get 29 sacks this year. All right, so. Let's see if the Falcons can pull it off. I'm, you know, I'm tired of waiting for this team to get up off their butt. They're finally getting up off their butt, but they, they got to pull in this fish. So I'm tired of waiting. I did 12 years of it in Azkaban. So uh, we'll see what the Falcons can do, if they can uh, get us out of Azkaban prison and, and actually give us something to root for on this on this defensive side of the ball, something to get excited about other than just functional second, third, and fourth round picks that may or may not be good. Right. So we'll see. We'll see. We're we're hoping, man. We're hoping. Wonderful time to be alive. It's a beautiful time. Right. What, what, what's the tank quote from uh the major? We're just quoting all the movies. But you know, very exciting time. So we'll see if the Falcons do something with Justin Simmons. See if they do something with the pass rush. Potentially tomorrow that will be a topic of conversation. You know, talking about moving Zach Harrison to out to edge. Maybe that will help alleviate the Falcons pass rush issues. We'll keep you certainly up to date on Justin Simmons, but we'll probably just have to wait and find out. I know we're going to be sitting here. I'm not, I'm not going to do a full Justin Simmons breakdown. I'm not, I'm not going to get your mouth ready for some hash without having some hash. We, we need to reel in the big fish. We need to be eaten before I start, you know, talking about all the accoutrement that we're going to be spring. You want some blackened fish? Oh, oh, we got to reel in that big fish. Oh, you want some sriracha, honey sriracha? Oh, I made this glaze, maple glaze, all that stuff. We got to reel in the fish first. So we, we won't get too deep into what Justin Simmons could potentially bring until we reel in that fish. But in the meantime, maybe the Falcons will go after a pass rusher. I said they won't go after Justin Simmons. I said they won't go after Hassan Reddick. Maybe that means they'll actually go after Hassan Reddick. Maybe that's something worth exploring on tomorrow's episode. So we'll see you guys. Make sure you make us your first listen by uh, subscribing on YouTube or wherever you Listen to podcasts. Check out Locked On Fantasy Football as your second listen. Check out Locked On Sports Atlanta as your second listen. It's all part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.